All right. Good morning. So I'm just going to uh, drop into a, a bit of a <clears throat> an abstract explanation, if you will, of the disease of alcoholism and, and addiction. And, and why I think, and I'm not a doctor or a psychiatrist or a psychologist, I'm just a layperson who is, <clears throat> who's worked in the field for many, many years, why I think we can see it as a mental illness. And, and uh, um, <laughs> here's the deal. If you, if you are an addict or an alcoholic, you're going you're gonna to get this. Like you're going to see it right away. <clears throat> I remember the first time that I saw it, uh, when I was a kid, I was probably 19 or 20, and I had a PO, uh, um, you know what that is, not a probation officer, actually, uh, that I had at the time, and, and her name was Dorothy, and Dorothy was amazing, and, and I used to go see Dorothy, and we would sit and talk, and, and sometimes we would sit and talk for hours, and finally one day I was talking to her, and I said, it's like, it's like I have a, uh, um, a saboteur, in, lives inside of me. Something that every time things get going well seems to sabotage my life. And, and, and it was the first time that I kind of recognized that there was something going on. It felt like a, like a separate being even inside of me that when, when things were rolling along would, would, would kind of, um, you know, come along to screw it up. And, and, uh, you know, now most of us would think, well, no, no, David, that's just you. And, and yes, but if you're an addict and alcoholic, you'll know what I'm talking about. You'll understand because you have witnessed this. You'll have said you'll wake up in the morning and say, who did that? You know, because it's like literally like there's another a, another entity that that comes into the uh, the being or, or the sphere of the addict and the alcoholic that, you know, because. Uh, when we say I'm done, like quit, I'm finished, I'm, I'm never going to drink again, we really mean it, you know, and we start on a new path and we really mean it. And, and it's, it's like this alter ego. I, I don't know what you want to call it, the, you know, the shadow side, you call it whatever you want. There's a lot of different names for it, but it, it literally somehow uh, takes control. And, 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 and we're, when, when we don't have the power to... Uh, to uh, command control, to take, to keep the reins. And, and uh, you know, and you might say, well, that sounds weak. Well, um, hi, Teresa, thank you for being here. And, and weak or not, call it what you want. You know, for the addict or the alcoholic, um, you know, eventually we be, it becomes hopeless. We realize that we're screwed and we can't get out. And, you know, and we can't even talk to you about it. Because it sounds so crazy, and and um, I just I wrote a little piece here. If the addict, it it what if the addict has an alter ego that wants to control him, or and and more than control him, it seems like it wants to kill us in a way, you know. Because um, this may sound crazy to normal people, but the alcoholic, the addict knows exactly what I'm talking about. What other explanation is there for our actions or inactions that we finally realize are beyond our mental control? If we can control this saboteur, we would not need a loving relationship with a higher power. The crux of the problem is in the denial that the enemy even exists. So often we need to be close to complete uh, destruction to make a stand. There is help. You're not alone. So that, you know, I know it's like, but why would we need a higher power if we had the power within us? You know, I mean, you, you guys know that uh, if you have an alcoholic or an addict in your family, you love them. And when they're, you know, in good shape, they're in great shape. They're, they're fun to be around, you know. But something is always lurking. Something feels like it's always lurking there. That it's uh, this, that doesn't want us to, um, A, um, kind of succeed in life. Or, you know, we can look at it and say, oh, it's because of our trauma and we, you know, we're set differently. But what if it is or feels like, you know, like almost like a separate being? I, I don't, I'm just, just explore that for a minute. And, and, and uh, I know that as, as we move down the path of awakening, if we, as we go down the path of awakening, right? Hi, Don Fisher. As we go down the path of awakening, we realize that, that uh, it, 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 
that alter ego is still there. So even if we've been in recovery for a long time, and uh, but as we as we become more awakened, as we realize that we're that you know who we truly are is a spiritual being, and we and we have the the experience like Bill had, you know, this awakening of holy Toledo, I'm not separate. This is you know. God is everywhere. This is God. We are God in a way. We, you know, like Bill said, God either is or he isn't. Either he's everything or he's nothing. And we start to have that realization. We're, that we're then vibrating in a much higher level. You know, um, ego, the war is on sometimes. The war is on. It's like, and, and uh, so those of you who are in recovery and, and realize this, you know, it's like, holy shit, you know, how come I'm having these thoughts? And, and um, ego does not want to give up. Ego will say, oh, it's okay. I can continue to run the show. I promise I won't kill you. <laughs> I know it sounds like, you know, we're having conversations with imaginary characters, but if you have lived in the hell that many of us in, in, in addiction and alcoholism have lived in, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And it's, it's, it doesn't go away. <clears throat> it doesn't go away. So, but what happens is that we change, like Dr. Young said, you know, we have a complete psychic change and we, our whole mission changes, our whole context in life changes. You know, we, we go from what's in it for me to how can I serve thee? And it, it, it literally shifts. And if we're living in that service model, we're less likely, right? We're less likely to uh, um, get caught in, in the fear, in the, you know, in the desperation of, of the lower realms, if you will, of that other being, if, call it what you want, but, you know, if you're an addict or an alcoholic, you know what I'm talking about, you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? Hey, Jason, good morning, love you, love you guys, I'm glad you're here. So, that's the deal. Anybody relate to that? You know, there's like a separate being in, in the, uh, uh, in, in the psyche of the addict or the alcoholic who, who doesn't want our success, if you will, doesn't want us to be free, you know, wants to keep us in bondage. And, and, uh, and so we, we have to fight, you know. We, not only do we have to fight, but we have to pray. We have to become, you know, I mean, all the metaphors of fighting dragons and yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, all those stories are about this, this fight. This, this, this reaching out to uh, become who we truly are. Yeah. So um, look at that. They're not some, you know, mystical stories of the past. They're metaphors of, of mankind and womankind uh, fighting for their freedom, right? And our freedom is in our spiritual relationship, in our relationship with this, with this oneness. This, and as we move up into unconditional love and, and into acceptance and, and uh, uh, out of complaint and out of judgment, and, uh, you know, we, we're then in that, you know, presence of that oneness of love. And as we, we move more into that presence of love, we, uh, we're free. You know, we get free. There is a place we can get to, I believe. You know, Dr. David Hawkins talked about it. Muji talks about it. Jesus talked about it. You know, and, and, uh, and, and we can all have that. But I think that recognizing, right? Recognizing that, that there is, you know, there is an enemy if, in a way. And it and it's, and, and it's, doesn't really want our success. And I know that, that in, in many religions, they gave the enemy uh, a face. And I'm not talking about any idea of a face of the enemy. I'm just saying that, that the alcoholic and the addict knows what I'm talking about. Because we've struggled. We've said with all the sincerity in our hearts, I'm done. <clears throat> we've, said, we've said it. And then the next day we're drinking. Right? <laughs> Fuck. Yes. And so this is not a fight for the faint of heart. But, there, um, you know, my message is, is there's support. There really is. There's, there's tons of support. And, and uh, I'm here. There's many here for you uh, to, 
you know, move out of this. Even being in the meetings, when you go to the meetings, Hawkins you says the meetings vibrate at unconditional love, over 500. Love, baby. Love is, you know, our, our weapon. It is our, um, it, it, it's the way out. Okay, that's my deal for today. I'm going to do the reading. I read from this little book on a daily basis. <laughs> it's fun. Sometimes I get caught up on, in uh, uh, in my my talk, you know, and uh, 25th. And and uh, a couple of times I've gotten right to this point where, you know, got all fired up and telling him, you know, that there is a way out and all that. And, and then um, uh, I've said, okay, and, and I finished. I've ended the video. <laughs> I've had to come back and do the reading. I've done it a couple of times in the, in the last year. All right, March 25th, Thought for the Day. So from this little book, 24-hour day book, and, uh, um, you know, if you if you listen to my video and, and you can, you know, you agree, if you if that's, if you get it, uh, let me know. You know, write a comment, hey, and let me know. Also, I'd love it if you go to YouTube and subscribe to my channel. I'm building that bloody channel. We're going to, you know, I'm just going to keep doing this. And, and uh, enough people are saying thank you, David. You know, when, so I'm just going to keep sharing um, that there is a way and, and, uh, um, and that so many people have tried us, tried, you know, have, have tried to share with us and, and, uh, and we get caught in the, in, in the minutia of the day sometimes and we get caught up in fear and uh, we don't have to live there. Okay, March 25th, thought for the day, strength comes from coming to believe in a higher power that can help you yes first we need to realize that we need help we do and that's what i was just talking about you can't define this higher power right but you can see how it helps other alcoholics yes you hear them talk about it and you begin to get the idea yourself you try praying in a quiet time each morning and you begin to feel stronger as though your prayers be were heard so you gradually come to believe there must be a, a power in the world outside of yourself which is stronger than you and to which you can turn for help. Yes. I mean, it, that's the beginning, right? Uh, the, uh, the story is uh, uh, the alcoholic spoke to God and he said, God, show me and I'll believe. And God said, no, believe and I'll show you. And, and uh, so that's the kind of the, the tough little deal there that, you know, we must... Uh, take action as if we believe and and uh, the belief will come stronger and and then the relationship becomes real meditation for the day spiritual development is achieved by daily persistence in living the way we believe god wants us to live yes uh, like the wearing away of, of a stone by steady drops of water so will our daily persistence wear away all the difficulties and gain spiritual success for you. Never falter in your daily steady persistence. Go forward boldly and unafraid. God will help and strengthen you as long as you are trying to do his will. Let's say as long as you're doing his will. Well, as long, yeah, trying, I guess we can use trying. Prayer for the day. I pray that I may persist day by day in gaining spiritual experience. I pray that I may make this a lifetime work. Yes. I mean, if there was some other way, guys, we'd share it with you. I mean, there, you know, look around. This, if you're caught, if you understand, you know, what I just spoke about, uh, then, then um, this, this is, as far as we know, and I've, I've looked at a lot of other things, and as far as we know, this is the only way. Um, you know, and that's, uh, there's been lots of books written about it and lots of stories told about it, but... Uh, surrender to this power that you may not understand or you may not have a relationship with is the path. And uh, no need to stay in the lion's den any longer. All right, we're going to do a little meditation. I've been doing this every day for a few minutes and, and, uh, and call it meditation. I don't care. Call it sitting. I call it sitting sometimes. It's a, the whole thing is just to be still right? Just shut up. Be still for a couple of minutes every day. Okay, I'm going to kind of talk you into it a little bit or talk you down or bring you into this moment a little bit and then, you know, I'll leave you here. Um, so close your eyes. And it's this, this is a practice. 
all right? And for some of us, it doesn't come easy. You know, we're like, oh, I have such a busy mind. Okay, we all do. That's a universal story. But we still be still. So find, you know, somewhat of a comfortable spot. Bring yourself into this space, into this room. Feel the walls of the room around you, wherever you happen to be sitting. Feel the chair, the couch, or the bench, or whatever you're sitting on underneath your butt. Experience the sounds, the sound of my voice. If there are any sounds around, just in, include them. Just include them. They are part of what is now. So you could do this on a busy street corner. You really can. It doesn't matter. Come into your breath. Just feel into your body, be here now. Just let go of everything from the past, all concepts, all ideas. It's all just thought, it's not real. What's real is right now, right here. Just feel your body relax and your shoulders drop. Tension roll off of you. Breathe deep. Experience the stillness, the isness oneness of this moment. And let all ideas of you, your image, your attachments, your identities all drop away. For just a moment, be nothing. This beautiful quiet space is here for you every moment. If you practice this, even for three or four minutes, it becomes a welcome place, a refuge, a safe place. I'm just going to leave you here. Stay as long as you like. Know that you are loved. No matter what you've done or haven't done, you are loved. 